Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are doing the long-awaited side-by-side comparison of the Dwarf 2 and the C-Star S50. Uh, basically in this video we're going to be focusing obviously more on the Astro mode since that is more of what these devices are for. Uh, but we're going to be shooting one certain uh, deep sky object and that being M33 or the Triangulum Galaxy. I believe uh, that's what that is. So um we're gonna do a basic run through of you know the calibration of the dwarf 2 telescope as well as the calibration process of the c star s50 uh we're gonna allow it to do the go to for both of those and we're gonna have them run for the same amount of time uh to see uh, how much exposures we can get uh, in regards to exposure time as well as uh, the amount of time it takes to get those exposures because we do know that the C-Star S50 does reject frames. The Dwarf 2 does not reject frames. So uh, we're going to have to see wh what they do uh, in regards to each of those. We're going to take it in later for post-processing, but first we're going to have to let it run for a while. So let's set up Dwarf Lab first. Uh, here's our Dwarf Lab app now open. I already have my Dwarf 2 turned on and my C-Star S50 turned on. Unfortunately, I can't have uh, both connected to my device at the same time. Uh, but I will do what I can. Uh, I'm just going to have to take turns with this, unfortunately. So let's set up our connection. Okay. Uh, Dwarf 2 is now turned on. So obviously we're going to have to do our first part, which is the calibration. Uh, as I always say, point it up to a part of the sky where there's uh, no stars. I mean, no nothing in the way. So like, that's good. Where it is. Let me just move it around just a little bit like that. I had to focus it. Obviously, the autofocus was the first thing that I noticed. The difference uh, between C Star S50 and Dwarf Lab is that currently the autofocus is not the best, so you kind of have to do it by hand, which is fine. It just takes a little bit while longer. All right, so I feel like my stars are as focused as they can get. So do the astro mode. So one of the things that I noticed was actually that the Dwarf 2 does not automatically take dark frames before each session. You have to do that manually uh, using the astro dark function. However, the C star does automatically enhance the image by taking the dwarf, uh, dark frames before uh, it does each shooting session. So I already have my dark frames. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my calibration after I do stop go to calibration and allow it to calibrate which takes just a moment okay so calibration is success now the go-to process is very easy you just scroll down till you find your uh, object you click confirm and it will automatically go to the object i'm sort of hoping that it is above uh, the horizon already it appears that it is uh, already above it so that is good uh, we allow it to plate solve. Okay, it is now go to tracking uh, correctly. So now we are going to switch over to our C Star app and start setting up the C Star. Let's see if this is any you know easier. Uh, I am aware that oh there we go. Let's close that out. We don't need that. Uh, I am aware that the C Star is actually a little bit easier to set up in my opinion. Uh, the whole process is much quicker. However, it is not able to be polar aligned. Of course, for this, because we're doing a comparison, I'm not polar aligning my Dwarf 2 telescope, but you can polar align uh, the Dwarf 2. Let me update this while I'm at it. Start updating. Should only take just a moment. Uh, while it updates, I, I will explain. Polar alignment is when, you know, for those who, that, who do not know, polar alignment is when you align the side of your Dwarf 2 uh, with the... Uh, polar star which is Polaris the North Star or the South Pole um, what this does is this reduces the field rotation greatly which allows your image to be much larger uh, and the Dwarf 2 is able to do that I'm assuming because it does not really rely as much on compass and relies more on the image calibration however the C star perhaps perhaps this is not true perhaps this is just a speculation but as far as I'm aware the C star relies more on um, uh, the digital compass to do its calibrations. Uh, so that might have an effect on it. So let's hit finish here. 
So as I was saying, as a result, the Sea Star is not able to do the polar alignment, which causes there to be much more field rotation in such a small uh, field of view. So let's do stargazing. Uh, obviously, we have to do the calibration. Calibration is quite simple. You don't really have to do anything. You just find your object. So go to Object, Galaxies, and find M33, wherever that is. There it is, M33. Hit Gazing, and it will automatically go to. Okay, so it appeared that the Sea Star just wanted to give us a turnaround to show how beautiful it is. We all appreciate the shape of it very much. Uh, so thank you for that Sea Star. Anyways, let's do our autofocus. The autofocus on Sea Star, as I said, does work very well. Uh, you just press a button and it will focus by itself. Usually, uh, as long as you have stars that are bright enough, it will work fine. If you don't, then maybe you'll have to go to a brighter star like Vega or uh, others that are brighter and do the autofocus and it will focus perfect for you so this one is autofocusing there appears to be decent amount of oh never mind there's not a decent amount of uh, bright stars uh, let me try it one more time see if it works and if not I will have to go to Vega to see if it can focus okay autofocus failed so let's go to Vega real quick just to do the focus um, zoom out Let's go here, not there. We'll go to this one. Go to. Okay, now we can do our autofocus. So just click autofocus, just like that, and you will see how well it does its autofocus. All right, so autofocus is complete. As you can see, the stars are nice and sharp and beautiful. So let's go back to uh, M33, the Triangulum Galaxy, and center it. Okay, so the object is centered according to the C star. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this out here for a while. Like I said, a very long time till about 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let them both run for the same amount of time as you will see on both of the screens uh, that are going to be showing in a moment. And we will see which one gets the better image before we take it inside to do the post-processing. Uh, see which is easiest to process and which, once again, gets the better image. Uh, again, if you're interested in purchasing the either the Sea Start or the Dwarf 2, I have the links in the description of the video. So make sure you check that out as well. So uh, let's leave this out here now and allow it to start shooting. Okay, so the Dwarf 2 and Sea Star have officially finished shooting for tonight. Uh, as you can see, we have our Sea Star image and our Dwarf Lab image side by side. Uh, there's a lot we can pull out with both of these images. The Dwarf 2 seems kind of hazy, and the Sea Star does seem to have a nice amount of detail. However, there is a lot of field rotation in both of these images. But honestly, as they are right now, with just a little bit of maybe just contrast added, they would still be nice and pleasing to the eye if you don't want to do any kind of post-processing on it. But for those who are serious about astrophotography and would want to do post-processing, let's get it onto computer. Okay, we now have the Dwarf 2 and C Star connected to PC so we can uh, put these files onto our computer of the Triangulum Galaxy. So let's open this up. You can scroll down here. You see I have my Dwarf 2 data right here. 
Just need to figure out which one it is. I believe it's this one. Let's see how many fits files it has. No, it is not that one. Um, yes, it's this one here. So you can see it has far more. And here's our stacked PNG file. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So let's take this. We're going to move this over to our home screen. Put it there. Allow it to copy out. And then we will go to our C star. C star files. Honestly, I feel like the C star is pretty, pretty well organized. Um, as you can see here, just go ahead and open this up. As you can see, we already have it saved as M33. It saves automatically, which I do think is very convenient. You can just take it out. And then let's see, it is going to be this one say at 10, three, no, sorry, 308 AM. That's the time that we finished the recording. Um, this is about three hours again of exposure time. We could have done more, but, uh, the clouds were starting to roll in. So we did have to cut it for short, unfortunately. But, uh, as I showed you before, the images did come out quite well for the amount of exposure time that it had. So this is going to take about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. While that completes, we can first get started on this one, the one by CSAR, and we will start processing this to see how easy it is. Alright, so it is open now. Obviously, we're going to switch it to our auto stretch and unlink it. And here is our image. First thing I'm going to want to do, obviously, is to crop out all that background uh, noise. So let's... Uh, rotate that, rotate and crop. It is going to leave our image a little bit angled, but we can fix that later. So rotate and crop just like this, apply. Very nice, hit close, and we're going to save it, obviously. Then we're going to do our background extraction, generate. Uh, apparently it got a little bit of the galaxy there, so we're going to undo that just a tiny bit. Generate again, a little bit more, generate, and again, a little bit more, generate. And that should be good. So we hit compute background now apply and it evened everything out now we go to image processing here uh, and we will do our remove green noise apply hit close and as you can see it got a lot of that uh, additional noise out i do see there's still a lot of these weird banding in it uh, hopefully we can get rid of that through post-processing um, but that is something i have noticed in several other c star images unfortunately there's this weird banding thing going on uh, maybe that'll be fixed in the future, who knows, but we'll try to get rid of it as much as possible. Uh, so the next thing we do is our dithering, uh, deconvolution. Uh, we're just going to leave it like this and we're going to hit apply and allow that to run. Okay, that finished. Now we hit apply, close. Okay, then we go to image processing, do our photometric color calibration. I will say that C-Star has made it very easy for the color calibration because you don't actually have to look anything up. It already has the coordinates right here, uh, and it also has a focal length and pixel size, so that's very handy. So we hit OK for that, and that will finish. There we go. It's done. Hit close, and now we save this. Um, in regards to post-processing, I will say CSTAR does have the ability also to save individual FITS files if you want to stack in on serial yourself. Um, that's going to be coming out in a future update. Uh, we can turn that on automatically to save that, uh, but as for right now, we're just working with this pre-stacked FITS file. Uh, so, okay, image processing, we're going to get rid of the stars here so to just work on the galaxy. So, start at star removal, pre-stretch linear image, and execute. Alright, so it got rid of all of these stars now. Now we can really work on this galaxy. So, let's first put it into the linear mode. As you can see, it still looks fairly nice. We're going to uh, do our generalized hyperbolic stretch, bring this into 100 time 100 okay let's find this here there it is let's click on our symmetry point and start dragging it up that's a bit too much noise so let's apply black point and we might have to go back and forth in regards to this because it can be a little bit of a picky picky situation trying to do this so do that and we're gonna drag it up some more after we select this part Stretch factor. Apply and we bring up the black point again. That should be good. 
Next, we go to our color calibration. Color calibration, select this background, use current selection, background neutralization. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the rest alone. We're going to hit close. Let's go to image processing, color saturation, start bringing up the saturation. As you can see, it brings in a lot of that coloration that's very beautiful. Hit apply. Go back to our uh, saturation one more time. Bring up, drag up the background factor and drag up the saturation. That's a bit too much, as you can see here. Let's bring it down. There we go. That should be good. So we hit apply on that. Switch it back to the, the original form. And we hit save. That's our color image for the Triangulum Galaxy. Of course, I'm sure we could do an extraction of the red to try to get some hydrogen alpha data in there. Uh, but that's, that's to be saved for later use. Um, also, there is a nebula actually located somewhere in here that we could add some coloration into in GIMP. Uh, but for now, this is what we're going to leave it as. So let's go to our uh, star processing and bring our stars back in. See here, our desktop, try to find that. Should have put it in a fo uh, folder. So stacked, open, and then our star list. No, our star mask. So we open that, just like this. And we start dragging these stars up. Okay. I feel like this looks fairly decent. So we're going to hit apply on that and hit close. And then we will save this as our image. Save as unique file. And that has now saved to the working directory. Uh, I believe Dwarf 2 now has all of the data moved to here. So we can stack this. Of course, let me just delete these two files so it doesn't get mixed up. Nice, we close that, go to serial, and we set our home directory uh, into desktop, Let's see, M, no, dwarf raw, open, and then we run our OC preprocessing without dark bias or flats script. So that failed, let me try again, script. The dark bias flats it should have worked on that one. Let me go back here. Here, oh, I do need to name this as lights. I didn't mess up on that. Let me. I do need to move this into another folder first. Let me create that. And I did make a mistake there. Let's see, home, desktop, new, M thirty three, and then drag this into here. Close this. Try again. It has moved. Now let's rename this. Let's be lights. Enter. All right, now we can work with it. So let's go to serial. Open it again. Where is it at? There it is. Serial. We hit uh, home directory. Obviously, we're going to go to our desktop again. M33. And open. Now let's run through the script and allow it to stack. Okay, total execution time, 3 minutes and 22 seconds. So let's open up this file. Here's our result.fit. Hit open here. And let's do our auto stretch. Unlink that. It appears that it actually already um, got rid of a lot of this field rotation, thankfully. So we can just work on uh, most of it without having to crop a lot of it out. So let's just move this to here. Hit apply, close, and now let's just start working with our image. Uh, same as last time, we're going to do our background extraction, generate, let's add more samples in, generate again, and compute background, apply, uh, let's do our uh, remove green noise, apply. Uh, I will notice there's not that weird banding like we saw in the C star image, there's not uh, very much of that, thankfully, uh, so we don't have to worry about that as much. Uh, it should be easier to edit, honestly. Uh, let's go to our remove green. Oh, no, we already did that. Our photometric color calibration. Where's that? Here it is. I'm sure you will see here. Um, it does not automatically find the coordinates. Actually, did it. It might have already. Um, usually, it doesn't. Let's try it. Okay, no, it did not. Uh, let's type that in. M33. Find. It's very easy process. There it is. Select those coordinates and hit go done it worked very easy so it's not really something you have to worry about it's not a big game changer 
Uh, so let's save it as that. Let's do our uh, Starnet Star Removal here. Starnet Star Removal. Okay. Pre-stretch. Execute. Okay. Starnet Star Removal has completed. So let's uh, start working on this now. Go to Linear. We're going to do our Hyperbolic Stretch. Bump this up to 100. There we go. And this was 999 15 second exposures, by the way. Uh, for anyone who perhaps is wondering, let's apply that black point, bring it up. Apply that, bring it up the uh, stretch some more. Take that, select it, bring it up again. It's too much. Apply black point again. Apply. Uh, so that's fairly decent. Let's hit close. Uh, you can see a lot of the banding. Uh, I do appreciate that in the Dwarf 2, the field of view is much larger, so you can fit a whole lot more into it. Uh, for example, if you wanted to fit two nebula that are close by into it, into one image, you could do that. Um, with Sea Star, you're more limited since it is uh, a very small field of view. <coughs> since it is a very small field of view, um, you can't really do as much with that until they release the proposed mosaic mode for the Sea Star app. Uh, there's not really much you can do in competition in regards to Dwarf 2 because the Dwarf 2 does have a much better amount of field of view, so you can fit bigger objects into it, like the entire Orion Nebula with the Running Man Nebula. You can fit the entire uh, Andromeda Galaxy. You can fit entire Cygnus Loop into it, but you cannot do that with Sea Star. In Sea Star, it's more limited to just one object per image. Uh, which is ideal. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's it's good for most people. But other people who want more in their image, uh, Dwarf 2 is definitely better for that. So let's go ahead and bring our saturation into here. Drag it up. Reset background. Okay. I do it again. Color saturation. Drag it up. Reduce the background. It's a bit too much, as you can see. Let's lower that down. It should be fine. Hit apply. We go back to our original. There we go. So we save that. And now let's bring the stars back in. Uh, star recomposition. Where is it? Star processing, star recomposition, our starless, and our star mask. Open that up. Let's bring our stars in. Just like we did with C star. We lower it down just a little bit. Uh, stars can actually be fixed a little bit if you want to, if you bring it into the uh, star fi starfixer.net. I'm trying to try, I think that's what it's called. So we hit apply, we hit close again, and then we save this as our final image for C star. Uh, like I said, there is more you can do with it. You can take it into other programs and work around with it, but this is what we have for this one. So let's open up that, drag this over, and let's do a little bit of a comparison here. Um, Move this out of the way. Where is it? There's our image. Okay. Let's open this up. So here is our C star S50 um, final image. After being processed, you can see the nebulosity right here. Nebulosity, where is it? There's some right there. You can actually pinpoint that. It's very small. There's also some in this area. This is all nebulosity. That can be fixed in GIMP if you want to add some extra coloration in there. But I do think the final image for the Sea Star is extraordinary. You can see a whole lot of detail in this galaxy with just three hours. Now imagine this with even more exposure time. Uh, how good of an image you could get. It would be almost like a professional rig. Uh, for those who say that the Sea Star S50 is not for actual astrophotography, you know, post-processing. Well, this is a little bit of proof that it is. As long as you get enough exposure time, Sea Star is a great option if you want to do uh, astrophotography editing. As you can see, we have... The Dwarf 2 image here, um, obviously there's not as much detail in regards to the actual galaxy itself, but that's not too much of an issue, honestly, in my opinion, because, say, if you wanted to, you could get more exposures to get more detail. Always more exposures is going to bring more light in. The more light, you're going to have more detail. But with the Dwarf 2, what you can do is you can have other uh, objects. Perhaps there's a galaxy, right, and you have a cluster beside it. You could fit that in in one frame and create this amazing image. Cygnus Loop, you can have that all in one image and it will fit fine. 
uh, Sea Star, you're a little bit more limited. As you saw, the actual uh, field of view is just this one portion here. For example, let me show you. Just move this over. Here it is. There's a field of view in comparison to this, right? But the, again, the Sea Star is able to get a whole lot more detail. So both could be good. You know, depending on what you really want from your astrophotography, whether you want wider field of view or you want smaller field of view, um, I do think that both are quite exceptional. However, there are some things that we need to discuss in regards to both of them, uh, in regards to filters and attachments and things like that. But for now, this is what we can do with the actual astrophotography aspect of it in regards to actually seeing the detail. Obviously, Sea Star is able to get more detail because it has smaller field of view. But at the same time, it cannot get as much fit into the image as the Dwarf 2 does with the amount of detail that it's still able to bring out. So uh, let's now discuss a few more details regarding both of them. Uh, and then you can come to your decision of which one you think is best. Okay, so there's a few more things that might perhaps influence your purchase of the Seastar S50 or the purchase of the uh, Dwarf 2. Uh, they have a lot of nice features, as you saw in the Astro mode. It does have a nice comparison. The Dwarf 2 has a very good field of view. The Sea Star does not have as good of a field of view. The Dwarf 2 doesn't have as good of a resolution. Sea Star has better resolution as a result of it having a smaller field of view. But what about the other things? You know, what about the modability? What about the tripods? What about the carry case? Let's let's look at that now. The Seastar S50 actually comes with a very sturdy tripod with a built-in level in it. And this tripod is actually strong enough that it can be used for the new uh, AM5 motor mount that is for uh, some ZWO telescopes or whatever other motor mount you may use for your astrophotography. It does have a dual purpose. The legs of the tripod are in fact adjustable so that you can level it out or uh, position it in any way you would like. And it, you could also just extend it if you wanted to, uh, just to be a wee bit taller. So let's just extend it, for example. Here's the tripod for the Sea Star S50. It has a height of about, I want to say, 14, 14 inches. Let's say as, as tall as it is. So it is a very good tripod. The tripod for the Dwarf 2, I actually don't have it on me uh, at the moment. It's about this big. Uh, it has a rotational ball head, which is handy if you want to polar align it. However, the tripod is only able to get up to about this tall. Uh, so it's best if you would go and purchase another tripod that is possibly more sturdy. Uh, that can also be used for polar alignment because... Uh, and, and oftentimes you want to position your, your tripod in certain ways that you cannot with the tripod that comes with Dwarf Lab. Um, so... All in all, I would say that the tripod for the Seastar S50 does win, but there's other factors we have to include. The next thing that I would look at is the carry case. Here is the carry case for the Seastar S50. As you can see, it appears to be a type of polycarbonate uh, case. Almost looks 3D printed on the front of it, if you look at the details here. Um, it is a good case, yeah. however, it is pretty big. It has a nice carry-on handle, but it doesn't seem to be the most sturdy, uh, not the most convenient thing to use. Uh, the one thing I do appreciate on the inside is that once you open it up, it does have extra storage space for underneath of the tripod for your solar filter, which actually does come with the C-Stars 50 as well. Now let's take a look at the uh, carry-on bag for the Dwarf 2. For this one, it is more like your classic camera bag. It looks like they did a very nice job uh, with the bag itself. It actually has two compartments, one for your filters and one for the Dwarf 2 itself. Also a zipper up here for if you want to store SD cards or things like that. It has a strap with a shoulder pad and of course the Dwarf Lab logo on the front. But it is, feels to be a very nice material, seems very sturdy and it's very convenient for uh, if you want to take it on hikes or if you want to take it um, Pretty much anywhere, even on an airplane, you can take this one there. Uh, and it won't really cause too much of a ruckus because it's very small. Uh, and talking about the size, the Seastar S50 is not as portable as the Dwarf 2 Telescope. Sounds like it's about to rain. Uh, again, it's not, it's not as handy as the Dwarf 2 Telescope because you can't really take it as many places. It's much heavier. Uh, as you can see, it is pretty much uh, a little bit more than half the size of 
the Dwarf 2. Um, and the Dwarf 2, you can take this pretty much anywhere. It is very small, very lightweight, and you can just stick it in this bag and take it wherever you want to go. However, the Sea Star case is pretty big, and you can't really fit this inside of any other bag, uh, like a backpack or things for that. Uh, for that matter. So it's not the best if you want to take it on hikes or things like that. I would definitely say Dwarf Lab um, is better in this aspect. Now, modability. The Dwarf 2 actually has several accessories you can purchase for it. As you see here is the lens. And what you can use with this lens is you can take uh, one and a quarter inch lenses like this. Um, they have solar filters that you can buy as well. And you can use these or buy your own uh, buy your own filters that are not made by dwarf lab and you just screw them into this filter holder here and just snap it on uh with a magnet it, it's very easy however the sea star s50 at the moment only comes with the solar filter that is just a clip on and the uh light pollution filter is built into the sea star so it's not really an attachable thing so you can't really customize that as much um until they actually release the the any any more accessories for the sea star so it's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. I do appreciate the modability of the Dwarf 2. Uh, it kind of fights against the, the fact that it doesn't have as much detail in uh, in the astro images due to the fact that it's a smaller, uh, no, a much wider field of view. But I would definitely say that in regards to modability, uh, carryability, the, -Star, the Dwarf 2 is definitely the winner in that aspect. However, in the aspect of um, detail the c star is definitely the winner with that night my personal opinion on both of these they both have their plus and their minus you know each has its benefits each has its thing that's missing out on so which one i would i pick i can't really say it really depends for you guys you know which one you feel is best of course maybe you want to be able to have a telescope that's more portable door flap maybe you want it for more detail for astro images that's c star um so that's really just up to you. As you can see, that, like I said, Dwarf Lab, not as much detail, but again, it comes with more modability and there's more things that you can do with it. However, in Sea Star, it has an incredible amount of detail, excellent battery time, but there's not much more you can do with it than that. Uh, of course, both of these have the solar and you know, lunar and scenery modes, which are great. Um, but in regards to which one is better, I would definitely say that is up to whoever um, is deciding to purchase. So hope this, hopefully this video helped to the, I hope you guys decide, you know, which one is your, gonna be your go-to uh, telescope. Of course, you could just get both. That's what I did. I went ahead and bought both of these and I do not regret buying either one. Both of these have their uh, benefits and I enjoy using them both, even on the same nights. So uh, let me go ahead and head inside before the rain starts falling. Uh, again, please like and leave a like and subscribe. It helps support the channel a lot. And please stay tuned for future videos, uh, especially regarding the Sea Star and the Dwarf Lab. Uh, so yeah, again, hope you guys leave a like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And I hope you guys have clearer skies than I do.